All right. Let's have a look at what's going on here. Uh, all of this stuff is starting to look very familiar to you guys. Do all the imports, get into a new folder, um, open up my image, print the sizes. And then here we're getting into some new stuff that we haven't seen yet. So let's go down to there. And here you can see that we're using um, uh, pretty big voxel sizes uh, and, and very few um, slices just to make things uh, nice and quick. So uh, create me a, an a elliptical cylinder and I want it to be of length uh, 50 millimeters and I want the radii to be 40 and 30. And I'm going to give it an origin. And then I'm going to get my emission image and I'm just going to use that as a template. So I'm going to fill it with zeros and then afterwards I'm going to start adding things in. So fill it with zeros and then add in that shape uh, where we predefine the shape and this time I want the, the voxel value to be equal to one. So the whole of my image should be equal to zero except for this uh, cylinder which is going to have a value of one. And then the shape, I'm going to move the origin, it's going to go somewhere else and I'm then going to add it back in and this time I'm going to give it a voxel value of 0.75. So now I should have two cylinders and then I'm going to show it, and that's what I see. Yeah? All right. So then uh, we can simulate. So we, we have now a new um, uh, emission image, and then we can simulate, the, obviously, the, the, uh, the acquisition data by doing a forwards projection, which we're going to do. This we've already done, so we're going to have our acquisition model using ray tracing. Uh, we're going to give it a template sinogram uh, set up, and then here's when we do the four projection. Do the four projection and then show me the data. And this looks very similar to Chris's slide where he had two point sources, even though on his slide you can only see one point source. <laughs> but, <laughs> but now you can convince yourself that if you did really have two sources, you would have two. Um, sinusoidal looking uh, elements in your in your sinogram yeah and again this is going to be a, um, looking on on the different views all right that's all well and good but we haven't added in uh, any attenuation so what we could do is we can create an attenuation image um, and we're going to create our uh, get an empty copy of our original image and then we're going to add in uh, a different cylinder in a different place because uh, we may not have obviously our attenuation um, is representative uh, of the anatomy of our patient and our pet image is a representative of the fun a functional aspect of our, of our patient and they don't necessarily have to be aligned so here what we're going to do is we're going to create a, a cylinder in, in a different position and so here you can say I've Create me a new cylinder, it's going to have a length of uh, 150, it's going to be uh, of a certain size in a certain location, and it's going to have a, uh, an attenuation of, of so much. Yeah? And then show me that. Right, so our attenuation image and our, our activity images are obviously different to each other. All right. And so then in Surf, we can add in, um, uh, we can add in, things like attenuation using our acquisition sensitivity model. Yeah? And so our acquisition sensitivity model will give it our attenuation image and will give it our, um, a new acquisition model. And here is where we do our forwards and this is where we convert our, um, our attenuation image into the attenuation factors. And I presume, yeah, and then we do uh, a display. And so then these are the attenuation factors that correspond to that attenuation image that we created. Make sense so far? Yeah? Uh, plot a line profile through it. Sorry, I've lost connection. I have, but um, I've, I've, it looks like I've lost internet, so then it's, one sec.
feel free to keep working your way down that example whilst I come back. <laughs> The idea of that exercise it allows you to put some shapes in different places and, and to try and understand something that you can also to show you how you do this in your shapes. So everyone else is edger, I'm still working. Is it just mine? Yours is working. <laughs> anyway, I suppose you guys can keep working through it, and you should see that when you forward project it and you take attenuation into account, you'll end up with a. Ah, I'm back online, I think. So, anybody knows if you do the plot? Through the attenuation factors, it's sort of one, and then it has a dip. Why is that? Why is it one at the edge? You can't see it really because it's plotted on top of the image. You have to be plotted. Mm. Uh, otherwise, it's up there. No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the attenuation factor, if you, if you the former went by a little bit quickly there, but you have it there, it's exponential, it's number B law. So exponential one, if you look through the new map, that if you're outside of the image, then there is no attenuation there, and so your attenuation factor is one. That's no attenuation, no loss of photons. If you are taking a profile somewhere through the middle of the, of the patient, then you will have a lot of attenuation. Just like a CT. Sorry, where do you see this on the plot? Yeah, it was missing in, um, so right below where it says attenuation factor sinogram in that image. Uh, there's a single line of code which says plot dot plot attenuation factors. Uh, if you do a plot dot figure just before that, it should plot it on a new figure. Otherwise, it's trying to plot the line on the same figure, so it's a oh, line at the top yeah. of the sinogram. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, so, well, so that's the question. So the, the attenuation factor that you're plotting is the probability of losing counts. Mm -hmm. Yes? And so it's one when you don't lose any. Okay. Well, okay, I said that incorrectly. So it, the attenuation factor is the survival probability. Yes, yeah, okay. yeah. In the attenuation correction, you would divide all this. So you map the time with your real sign. So if you do acquisition, it's confusing. And if you do acquisition modeling, you multiply with this factor because you, your counts will go down. Well, forward. Right. Forward. In forward projection, you multiply with the attenuation factor. And so that's why if you look at the, uh, your four projections where you've taken your attenuation into account, it should be darker in, towards the center because we put the cylinder towards the center, right? So there's higher attenuation there, so then you get uh, less counts in your projected space in, in the center. You do put the back projection and you say, I have my counts and I now divide by the attenuation factors, so I multiply the attenuation correction factor. And then, you and then this is a line profile showing that. So if I hadn't done any, when we didn't do any um, attenuation, we end up with much higher values towards the center, which is where we didn't have that attenuation. As when we, when we do have it, we have much lower values. And then the check is by, by doing that sort of um, multiplying the two together by uh, the profile where there wasn't any, any attenuation with our actual uh, attenuation factors that we calculated. Good. All right. So uh, a little bit, uh, some stuff for you to try now. I'd say don't mess around with the second one because we'll come on to that in good time. So first try uh, and back project both with and without the attenuation. That should be pretty straightforward. And then uh, afterwards, see if you can add in uh, an additive background to the model. And here you've got... Um, a help method, which I haven't executed. I suppose that the best thing that we can teach you here, since we only have a short time for each of our sections, is to teach you how to teach yourselves, right? So the best thing you can do is look at the help functions, have a read, see if there is any of the methods that you think that you might need. So here it's saying try adding in an, an additive background. So have a look through the help 
and see if there's anything in that help that would help you how to add in that additive background. So do you want to give those two uh, aspects a, a go quickly? I might try doing it at the same time and we'll see if we end up with the same answers. <laughs> Is there any way I can pause these projectors? I suppose not. That again? I'll, I'll leave it then. Yep, so give that a go. Uh, first try doing your backwards projection. And then try maybe doing that... Um, or is it show 3D array so you can have a look at the, the two of them side by side and then try adding in an additive uh, background uh, to your projections. Oh, I'm still seeing it. No, uh, no. Yeah, I'm doing it through Zoom. Ah, because you didn't have the correct one. Okay. Need to remember to bring it around with me, yeah. <laughs> Yo. Right, okay. Exercises are on GitHub. Yeah, reach out. Below yeah, yeah, yeah. projection is probably the first exercise. So this is a uh, set number of tangential mm -hmm. bars. So you, you might remember it. during the talk I said, well, line integrals is a bad approximation. So if you, you can draw multiple lines, but at the moment we only do that in tangential directions, so distance from the center. You could do it actually as well, but we have another approximation for that. So that allows you to draw more lines and have a slightly more accurate. If you if you don't do that, it will just draw one line. It should be find a little bit faster than you get this criticization of it. So no, 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 no. So it's between two detectors. So you, you have your one detector system here. So I can another one over there. But traditionally we sort of do one line. But it tends to allow more area. How are you all doing on that first one on the backwards projection? Everything okay? So maybe you, I mean, you can obviously call your variables whatever you want, but uh, if you do backwards projection, you'd probably say uh, acquisition model do backwards, yeah? And I back projected the same data here. You could do, you could back project your back your non attenuation with the non attenuation uh, acquisition model and your attenuation one with the attenuation model uh, acquisition model. Uh, but I project, back projected with the same data for both of them, and then I have two variables: one that's called back projection, no attenuation, and one with attenuation. And then I use the show 3D method. Yeah. Remember that the back projection is a transpose in the metric. Do you think that if you do all projection with that generation and that projection with 
Uh, so you can do your back projection uh, with and without the attenuation. Uh, and then I did show 3D to show the back projection with no attenuation um, correction. Uh, a show 3D with the attenuation correction. And you can see that obviously there's the, it's looking a little bit darker in the center. And then if you want, you can even show 3D um, of the difference between the two of them. That'll look something like this. <laughs> you know, if you if you take some data, I think there was a fill zero above somewhere. You should be able to create a sign again that is all ones. Fill. Be able to back project it. Ideally, we get something similar on next slide. Don't know that, and then you come back, would you project that? All right, and then for the, for the next one, I said, uh, can you see if you can use the help function to uh, get an additive background to the model? Can anybody, has anybody managed to figure out the, the particular method that we want to use? Or on the help? of the pet acquisition model. We get all this. It's additive term. Uh-huh, Add additive term. And so my additive term is obviously in the form of a uh, sinogram. So I could take one of my original sinograms that I projected earlier, could create a copy of that, fill it with some value, let's say filled with ones, and then I could add in that, uh, add that, back, uh, that background um, term. Yeah? So if you feel like giving that a go. Um, and background term, yeah. I'll just call it additive. So take any of my sonograms, it doesn't matter because they're all the, the same shape. Create a copy and fill it with some value. I think you can even use get uniform copy. Is that correct? Get uniform copy. You just give it a value of what you want it to fill, you with, fill it with. All right, so I could say, go to my acquisition data, any, any of them. So acquired data for no attenuation. I could say, get me uniform copy. And I'll fill it with ones. And now I've got uh, an additive uh, sinogram that's filled with ones. I could then go to my acquisition model and I could say uh, set additive term. Executor, everything seems to be happy. And now I could do the forwards or backwards projection with that. I forget what the, the question was. Check if it modifies the full projection. Is there any luck that you throw up a huge error now? Do that? <laughs> yeah. Try it, 
And then, everybody follow me where I'm going with this? All okay? So then I probably want to show it, and I'll probably do that by copying and pasting some code from above, sticking it down here, and I'll now replace this. You've got to be careful here, because when you're um, showing your images, they're going to be 3D, but when I'm doing my sinograms, they're going to be 4D, because that time of flight. So you just need to remember to stick a zero in at the front there. And I end up with these guys. Maybe it looks quite familiar. So I think if I increase, there's always the risk of uh, live coding, hey? Yeah, I was just wondering. What happens if I take the difference between the two? Yeah. Um, All right, so that time, uh, when I did it for the second time, I added in an analysis value. Hundred, and so then uh, the minimum height is 100. Does that make sense to everyone? I probably went at my pace, which means that... I've got the code, but I don't know what the answer is. So which bit are you, are you not so comfortable about? Uh, no, when I'm adding my, I'm with, the, like, with what's going on? So if, yeah. if you look at this, this help, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, so we've got our, our image here, which we're forward projecting to get into our, our, our sinogram, our acquired data. Okay. And now what we're doing is we're adding in this additive term here. Okay. All right. And so then you can see that if, uh, so that could, for example, be your randoms. In this case, it's just one flat value the whole way across, which is why our, our, we've just raised the whole value of our sinogram. Yeah. In the, in the real world, it wouldn't just be a, a fixed value. In the real world, you try and get things like a random. So we'll, we'll get into that when we get into one of the later notebooks. Yeah. So, OK, we're doing all this, and we're simulating somehow realistic pet data, I assume. Um, so well, this not too realistic, but OK. <laughs> <laughs> but it should get better, yeah. Of the photons, and is this so? Okay, so with this example, we so you know we're getting some semi realistic data. Is this also in the model when we do, when we do reconstruction, or are we just doing we, this? We, we do this to then add it into our model later on, but we don't necessarily have to, but obviously our reconstructions are going to be better. So that's why we're sort of building it in piece by piece, adding in the attenuation, adding in the background term, and then uh, we can then put that into a reconstructor, and, and hopefully we'll have better reconstructions when we take these sorts of things into account. So then in a real scan, you get like city data, then you put the attenuation from the city data, and you calibrate your detectors. And get exactly, the, exactly, yeah. Files. And also you get things like um, norm files. We'll, we'll have a look at those. You, yeah. Um, here we also have some, we also managed to estimate our random, which will be our additive term, and so on and so forth. So without further ado, let's get into some more exciting stuff. If each time you finish it, probably want to close and halt so that you're not running uh, too many um, Python kernels at any one time. Yeah. 